All right, I'm gonna give a little tutorial here on my new crayfish trap I just built. Um, I've seen a lot of designs online that were the cylinder ones, and I, I have a couple issues with them. One, the, being the cylinder is just a little bit difficult for the crayfish to get in. Um, I've used them before, minnow traps and everything, and you do catch crayfish, but I like the box design. A little bit better, it gives you a wider area for the crayfish to crawl up into the actual trap itself, and uh, a little bit more room and it's flat. It won't roll around in the water so I can sit it down in a nice area, maybe move some rocks or just drop it right off the edge of the boat. And uh, the designs I've added to it I think make it a little bit easier than some of the ones I've seen on the internet for sale. And uh, the first thing, I'm going to try and get these here with the camera if I can, the first thing I've did is I secured this side tight so that it can't move. The crawfish crawl up in, drop down, and can't get back out. And uh, it would actually been easier to do with uh, one and a half by one inch material, but they didn't have any at the store. The roll they did was like 50 bucks because it was a hundred and some foot roll, so I wasn't getting that. So I went with the uh, hardware cloth, which is half inch by half inch squares, and it's a little bit flexible, which I don't really care for, but it'll work. Second design I did, let's see if I can get a better angle here. Second design I did here makes it a little bit easier for getting the crayfish in now. This door is actually hinged at the bottom here with two pieces, three pieces of wire. Small wire that actually came with it to hold it together. Just wired tight. The crawfish can crawl up in it just like they could before and I actually put a small hook in here that I can unhook and drop this door out which allows me to just empty any crayfish that are in the trap out. Real easy, simple. And it's designed that it actually holds tight so that it will only drop so far back down in if this hook would come off so that they still pretty good about holding them. All I did was bend a piece of wire to hook into there. And that holds it up nice and tight there. I don't know if you can see that. Try and get a little bit better view here. This is just a piece of wire bent into a hook to hook in there and hold that. Now the next design, uh, a lot of people I noticed when they're using their bait, some people put it in socks, some people put it in plastic bags with holes in it, and just drop it in. One of the issues with that is, is when it's in there, it might float to the side, crayfish can just hang out onto the side here and actually just get a hold of the edge of this and just eat the material right outside, not actually forcing them to go in. Uh, another problem with that is you got to use socks, I don't like dealing with wet socks and bags or anything or just throwing the meat in there loose. So what I did is I actually put this cylinder in the center here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this is a 18 inch wide by 5 inch high cage and it's actually modeled after some of my muskrat colony traps. And I just made a 5 inch cylinder in the middle, perfect circle. Now on the bottom what I did is I've actually cut out this small section here, put the cylinder through and fastened it to the top so that it's tight in there. Then, just like uh, crab pots down at the beach, what I did is I put an actual little, another piece over here, it's a little bit larger than the actual hole that was cut out. Attached it here and here with two small circles, you could use some kind of zip tie or something that allows it to move, and then made a hook with a strap on it. So that I can drop that gate open, put new food in there, take that, let me zoom out, pull that back tight and hook it into the side. And that way when you set your pot down, it lays flat in the ground like this. Keeps that trap door secured, plus you have the latch here, so nothing can get in. They can't get in there, grab a hold of the thing, pull it over to the side, and sit here at the edges with the other crayfish outside and eat it. This way it forces them to get in. You have two entrances. Now in Pennsylvania where I live, you're only allowed to use a two entrance trap. A lot of them have four entrances, entrances smaller ones, uh, you certainly could make a design like this and do the cylinder at the edge where this is all shut and then there's just a small funnel that goes in here, which they have traps online like that that have uh, four funnels on every side here. The only problem with that is, is PA, they don't allow it. Two, you have to buy it online, have it shipped here. And I don't feel like spending that kind of money when I can do this stuff by myself. So this is my trap. It's uh, pretty simple. It took me maybe 15, 20 minutes to make myself. All it was one continuous piece. It was about a foot for the top, foot for the bottom, and then 10 inches for the sides. Then I just used a marker, marked it out, piece of plywood it's resting on here to bend it. Try to get it as flat as you possibly can. And uh, 
see it's a little bit wobbly. Try and get it as flat as you possibly can. The crayfish aren't going to mind that then. And then I actually leave little pieces of the metal on here. I'll show you the uh, tabs. The small tabs here are just little pieces of wire I bent into circles. But then I also leave little pieces of the actual one that I cut like this and loop that up in there. And that's what hinges it so that it doesn't fall back down in there. And uh, trapping season here for uh, crayfish doesn't open up until the first day of trout season, which is next weekend. Another thing I like about these is that they're flat. Like I said, they're going to sit still. They're not going to roll because I'm going to be putting them in a creek that's an approved trout water. And uh, people fish it, but not where I'm going to be placing these. And I don't want them rolling away. So I might even take and somehow put a wire loop or like a D-ring right here and put a piece of rebar that I can drive straight down the ground to pin it. <clears throat> One thing I recommend with these is set them like this. If the current's coming, if the current's, uh, say, coming this direction, you want to set the traps so that they're like this. That way you don't have any debris getting caught in here, nothing getting in here blocking the holes. Uh, that's, that's just my opinion personally. That's the way I like to set them. <clears throat> this is the first one of these. Like I said, I've never used the box traps before, but that's the way I always set my minnow traps so that I can get any debris blocking the holes for minnows. And uh, I'm going to make probably another one of these, or I got enough material for two of them. Like I said, it's 18 inches, but the sheet comes in 24. So when I cut the uh, just about three foot piece for the entire cage, I cut it off at 18 inches. That remaining five inches was enough, or six and a half inches was enough for this piece right here, for the cylinder. This was all just made out of one piece. So I actually have enough to make three more plus a uh, Maybe a little bit left over, I'm not sure. I think it's a 10 foot roll and they're about three foot a piece. Um, not sure if they have to be tagged. I do know when I was younger and we used to make little cylinder ones, they told us that we had to put tags on them. I don't know if that was just what the people I was trying to catch crayfish with. I was just a kid, we weren't really eating them or anything then. But uh, I am gonna put tags on them. I'm probably gonna make a uh, little tags up and put them in some kind of waterproof tape or something and just attach them to the side. Just in case, I don't know if that is or isn't part of the PA laws, but I'm going to do it regardless. And uh, for bait, I'm probably going to use leftover fish that I catch, uh, like the head and stuff, since that is what they naturally eat. Uh, I don't really feel like spending money on chicken livers or going to the store and buying any. I do have some that are fairly easy accessible from my brother back the road, butchers, sub chicken and stuff, but I just I think fish will work just fine. Uh, they are scavengers. They eat dead fish constantly, so that, that's natural food for them. So I think that bait will work just fine. <clears throat> Try and get a little bit better view here of the box if I can. Um, oops. I went with 18 inches for the overall length. Uh, I make my colony traps two foot, but they're for muskrat a little bit bigger. I went with 18 inches. That gives me enough room here. That and this door here actually is a little bit longer than this one because this one can swing the whole way out. This one, if it were to break loose, couldn't come the whole way up. And uh, you could even just make that one solid side, put your bait a little bit farther in the back. I made it far enough that they're going to come in, drop down to get to the bait. I didn't want it too close that they could sit on there and eat the bait. The basic design of every kind of trap like this is that when they go to get out, they're going to try and back up the way crayfish normally crawl and back into this corner here and not be able to get out. The biggest thing about this was, like I said, we used to do a lot of crabbing and we always had doors to open up and we always had the issue with crabs grabbing a hold of stuff. So that's why I wanted an entire side to open up. I know people make a little door at the top of their cylinder ones or like a minnow trap breaks in half is a little bit better example of what you would want. That's why this door here is a little bit steeper. I can actually lower it a little bit if I want. Uh, that's adjust This is adjustable piece here. and. Uh, that way I can dump them out a little bit easier. And I don't, I'm not going to keep any too, new, too small ones. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, that way I can dump them out, sort, see which ones I want, pick which ones I want to keep, throw them back. I'm probably going to be doing most of this from a kayak, considering my boat motor is just a little trolling motor. And don't think it'll get too well up the stream. So um, anybody has any comments or questions, let me know. Any suggested better baits, better ideas. Uh, any information on anything better, let me know. Like I said before, when I had more success using my bare hands catching crawfish than we did traps before. We were younger though, and they were just tiny traps and we really didn't know where we were, what we were doing. So if anyone has any ideas or wants to know how I built this or see a little bit better video, 
or a video of how to build one. I Like I said, I've got enough for two more. I'm probably going to build them here at some point. I got a little bit of free time on my hands, so at some point I probably will and I'll be posting them. I'm going to try and post a lot of videos up here. I do a lot of trapping, hunting, fishing, all that stuff. Uh, I like to do a lot of this stuff by myself. Bees, uh, just started keeping some chickens. So any kind of video like that, I do a little bit of taxidermy. I'm going to start putting them up here. So any questions, comments, uh, will be much appreciated. I check fairly often my uh, YouTube account and stuff, so I, all my emails and everything. So I will be on, and I will try and answer back everybody that I can. So thanks.